Hello, hello. We are live with Apostate Alex or Alexander Barnes Ross, uh, who's done a lot of amazing work in the UK and has been really one of uh, the chief protesters in protesting ideal orgs really across Europe. So he has a fascinating uh, history and is doing a lot of good work. So I figure it'd be great to, to have him on. And it's interesting after dealing with all the controversy with, with Mitch, it's an odd thing that I would have somebody uh, who's elicited some controversy, but obviously I want to get people's story. Yes, a lot less so though. So we'll, we'll, you know, which is a good and Dodge, thing. you've already shot yourself in the foot with that intro because I wouldn't yes. go that far to say that I'm the chief protester. Like there are so many people that have protested in the UK yeah. and in Europe and Absolutely. for years before I even came onto the scene. So, yeah. you know, I'm for not sure. the only one, I'm, I'm the only one streaming on YouTube in the UK that's like right. kind of doing the activism alongside protesting you know in other ways but like that doesn't mean i'm the first i'm certainly not the right. only and there are yeah. dozens of other people doing it and i can't do it on my own so yeah um, no, i think it. you've already started in a controversial place man but let's go i'm here for yeah. it <laughs> uh I, I appreciate and i appreciate you noting that yeah exactly you uh let me correct myself in saying you've been one of the more visible uh activists and there's there's certainly less people on youtube really in europe in general than there are uh in the us and in this in this neck of the woods um so yes obg foster already says chief organizer which alex i think that's fair. Is... i i organize oh, you... a lot of stuff right yeah. right right uh uh which you already corrected so yeah i guess we'll we'll go in you have a fascinating story uh and and this does talk about a bit of a controversy which some people don't get but i totally get which is you got in super young and you were checking out. So we'll start, I guess, with your story. Well, first, before I even ask about that, a fun question I like to ask, which other people don't ask, but what were your parents like? What did they do? What were their jobs? Were they working class, middle class, upper class? Are you, I, I assume you're a fellow wasp, probably like me, if, if you even know what that term is and people still use it. No um, idea what that means. No. Oh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. I, nobody uses it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, well, my grandfather was Scottish. I'm from Scottish heritage. But, um, yes, I'm definitely very white and very ginger. So, yeah. Um, in, in terms of religion, no. I mean, my family aren't really particularly religious. My mum is a musician um, and Interesting. Very, very successful in that industry. And my father works in um, a different field. They were divorced when I was... Um, two so I've always had like parents that are separate and very civil Me civil they they never... when I was three yeah I'm sorry they divorced when I my parents divorced when I was three so okay similar situation yeah right yeah I mean look, my parents never like I argued or whatever like they're all right. very civil so I would spend the weekends with my dad's and the weeks cool. with my mum and um yeah that was kind of my upbringing really um yeah. but yeah very normal I mean, normal in terms of what life was like at home, but right. I moved around a lot as a kid. So I went to five different schools wow. okay. um, and, you know, was never in a place for longer than a couple of years. So for me, I was always looking for stability and looking for, um, you know, like I would make friends and just start to kind of figure out who I am. And then I'd move to a whole different uh, like city or whatever. So I'd have to then try and find new friends and make new friends and then, you know, try and figure out who they are and like, so I was very like moving around a lot, a bit unstable in that way, but stable at home in terms of what my parents and family were like. Um, but then I dealt with a lot of loss, you know, a lot of people dying when I was younger, you know, someone, a friend of mine or someone that I knew of um, died every single year when I was in school. Wow. Um, so there was a lot of like grief and loss. And so, yeah, when I was 15 and in a very vulnerable state um, and I was looking for, answers and i'd heard a little bit about scientology and i'd seen this bbc panorama documentary that was negative about scientology it was the second one that john sweeney did which was just about fair game it didn't assess or look at the um like the beliefs or anything like that i didn't think oh sign me up i want to be a part of that organization i thought of that as huh i wonder why people what they believe in and why they defend it so vigorously yeah. Fair. that they would go to the extent that they do of trying to make John Sweeney look bad. So just out of pure investigative mindset as a teenager, wanting to understand more about these sorts of groups and stuff, I started looking into it and, 
you know, looking into lots of different things. I remember doing a massive research project on the Titanic when I was a teenager, just because I was always interested in learning different things. Um, and as part of that, I thought, okay, well, what have, what have Scientology got to say for themselves? Um, and so went and did a personality test and, yeah, ended up falling victim to their um, their coercive control, you know, their recruitment tactics and um, signed up to a course and said, we'll find out for yourself. Okay, well, what's the harm done in reading a book right. that, to hear what they've got to say for themselves um, rather than just believing everything that I've, <laughs> you know, read or heard on this one documentary or whatever. So, so yeah, and then you, I think a lot of people forget that Scientology is a coercive group and they use manipulation tactics to recruit people. And that's what I ended up doing when I was posted as director of public book sales. So um, I understand it and I understand how that works, but I didn't at the time. And so, right. yeah. And I think also coupled in with that trauma and loss and vulnerability um, in terms of the point of in my life, sure. they extract that from you and they kind of present Scientology as an answer. Um, to all of those problems and so i was like okay well you know i saw these adverts that said that if you're looking for the meaning or like the purpose in life and seekers of knowledge and you know Thank you're you not your name that. you're not your job you're not the clothes you wear you're not the neighborhood you live like, i know all the words those adverts like it all appealed to that side of me of like okay well i'm searching for who i am what i'm going to do with my life and what i want to make of myself and what i want to be when i grow up and it all kind of fell in at the right perfect time for me to then fall um you know to be prey for them i suppose right that um, makes sense. so that's how i end up getting in yeah 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 it's it's weird that you know uh i just want to address of a, a comment maybe that force be with you uh question dodge you do your homework how much have you educated yourself on only because it helps this convoluted cult and the players get understood i joined a cult in my youth due to being alone uh, during my parents' divorce in the late 70s. My family, parents were toxic, fighting, bad-mouthing, and we kids were afterthoughts, I em em emphasize. So yeah, you know, there's a lot of uh, pre-behind-the-scenes trauma. And, and just to address that, you're you're quite young, right? You're 15, I suppose. Uh, right. So it's like, you know, your, 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 your moral structure and your rigidity of how you will go forward with your life is not fully formed at the age of 15. And I, this is a, a, an odd comparison, but I remember watching, like I loved Goodfellas, the uh, mafia movie when I was 15 years old. And, you know, was I wanting to join the police because they were, uh, you know, catching the criminals? No, they, they you know, the mafia like at that point when I was 15, it's like, oh, that would be cool to be part of the Goodfellas mafia and have Tony, Tony Bennett music following me around everywhere. And there's something that, when you're that young, that kind of glitz and glamour, which you were talking about the promotional and the importance of the promotional materials. And that's, that's actually, that's interesting to me that the promotional materials actually will hook somebody in. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's not the glitz and the glamour. It's right. the buttons that they press, you know, it's the, right. you know, if you look, I did a video on my channel recently where I gave, I gave a talk in Brighton about how I ended up joining when I was a teenager and stuff and kind of went into this in depth and like how promotional materials are a part of that. It's not right. the reason, you know, it's one well, of many course. things that they use, but you know, they, they push the buttons of like, okay, are you looking for more in life? Are you looking for a reason? Why are you here? You know, what are you trying to do? Life isn't just about, um living a nine to five monday to friday there's more to life you know have, are you the sort of person that asks questions about life well we have the answers seekers of knowledge uh, you know that's kind of how they portray themselves in their and their stuff and so um that kind of appealed to me is like well yeah, you know yeah. that's what i'm that's where i'm at in my life and so i didn't walk in and say sign me up i walked in and asked all the questions you know i heard about disconnection i hear you tear families apart i hear you do x y and z and scientology's manipulative tactics work on a vulnerable teenager right sure. that's what a lot of people don't realize is they answered all of those questions but they answer it in such a way that as a vulnerable teenager i looked at and thought okay well maybe maybe it's not quite what it seems or maybe people have slightly misunderstood the way disconnection happens or maybe people right. have you know done things in america that are different to how they're done here maybe you know this that and that it plants a seed of doubt in your head so you know as a vulnerable teenager i go okay cool well maybe it's not quite what people say and what's the harm done in reading a book or doing a life improvement course where you go in for an hour once a week you know 
what's the harm? Because all that would do is help me understand what Scientology actually is and make my own decision as to whether I feel I'd been manipulated. And of course, over six months or whatever, you go, well, no one's forced me to disconnect from my family. I haven't seen anyone locked in the room. I haven't seen any of this. And so maybe all of those stories of these horrible abuses and things that have happened, maybe that is how it's done in America and it's different in the UK, or maybe that's a small proportion of people who've had a bad experience, but the majority of people have a good experience, whatever. Like you tell yourself, you start to kind of tell yourself these, you know, doubt yourself, I suppose. Um, And then next thing you know, you're on staff and, you know, then you end up becoming victim to these abuses yourself because, you know, no one locks you in a room on day one. Otherwise, no one would join. That happens after a period of time. Right, right. And and, and it sneaks up on you. And that's that's always the thing, right? It's it's it might be a small percentage. There was no really tangible numbers. So I understood why. But that's it. So you get involved. I wonder what that's I'm trying to like think if I got involved in call at 15, like what that's even like so young. What were do they put you on staff like soon after you joined the cult were you still under 18 wow okay so to address some not you controversy but to address some other controversy it seems like they were employing uh children you know uh obviously yeah, so, not sea org but still employing children in the- yeah so this is what i think like just to touch on the whole mitch thing i think um what mitch was trying to say is right now there are no children in the sea organization right yeah. I, and i i also agree right now there aren't children in the sea org okay but that you doesn't mean them. okay that that doesn't mean there aren't children on staff and that doesn't mean there aren't children who are public, you know, children of, of parishioners and stuff. That doesn't yeah. mean children aren't being abused. Sure. Um, but for example, I saw pictures just the other day of class five staff members who are children who have just done their training at flag under right. the golden age of admin OEC FEBC stuff. So like, yes, there are children on staff. There are children being abused right now. But in terms of the actual C organization, exactly. at least in the UK, I don't know about elsewhere. Right. But when I was on staff, when I was kicked off in like 2014, as of then, there were no children in the C org. It was outlawed. They weren't allowed. The cadet org was shut down in... Um, I think it was about 2016 in the UK or maybe 2014 right. because they, they outlawed having children. It were outlawed. They made it against policy to have children in the SEAL organization. So once they all hit the school leaving age of 16, the cadet org in the UK was shut down. Um, but that doesn't mean there aren't children being abused, children on staff, children sure. who have hate under, but there aren't any children in the SEAL organization that I'm aware of in the UK. Right. Um, but yeah, in terms of when I joined staff, I was a child because, you know, the class five staff can be under the age of 18. Um, and I was and all of the other staff were very young, too. You know, most of the staff were 17, 18, 19 years old. Um, so it, everyone was really young. And part of that was the appeal of like, you know, we get to do these cool things. Everyone's young. You know, we're all going to go out book selling. We're all on a mission to like help the planet. And we're doing these great things like we're all around the same age and have the same goal in life. Like, cool, let's hang out and let's do fun things. Scientology is cool. Right. And that was part of the appeal as well at that age. I didn't. London wasn't like other orgs that are kind of old stuffy buildings in a strip mall. London was this brand new, plush, lovely building very grandiose that was filled with mostly young people around the same age as me so it was like cool it It was a cool thing to do yeah Yeah. and can i ask just real quick just what just to figure i mean could you validly say just just to understand either side just because the whole sea org thing is a, a, a a point of discussion could you say for everybody who's been out wouldn't it wouldn't it be very tough one way or the other to definitively because and you very much said you as as far as you're aware so you've you've made that caveat but but for others can they do they have the authority to say they know that there are no kids in the sea org if even the most recent person out of it left still two years ago so that would that would just be my my you know remark upon i mean that's that's hard because like in a way yes but in a way no because like policy cannot be changed policy should be implemented the same around the world there shouldn't be a difference in how scientology works in the uk as the us as europe like it should be all the same everywhere 
but whether or not it's actually like that who knows like for example um there are orgs in the us who are still enforcing their staff members to wear face masks and gloves and like all those sort of yeah, heard that. yes yeah Fine. but that that's not the case in London or at St. Right. Hill or here sure. in the UK. So that's a difference. But the right. reason they're doing and that. Canada probably would have a different scene as would. Yeah. Know, but right. as per how Scientology is meant to be, it's meant to be the same everywhere. So there sure. are always going to be differences. Yes. So if someone comes out and says, you know, it's not like this or it is like this. Well, yeah, they in a way it's meant to be the same everywhere but who knows if it actually is um all i can talk about is what it's like from my yeah. experience and um i've never yeah. tried to claim to be an expert on things that i wasn't involved in you know oh. the the class five staff experience is very different to the seal experience um the london experience is different to the saint hill experience the london experience is different to like everyone has their own experience and it affects right. them in their own way yeah. there are a lot of similarities yes but there are also some key differences and what i try and do with my channel and my activism is yeah talk about my story and how it affects me but mostly yeah. it's give a platform for other people to share their stories and the number one most important thing is to raise public awareness and stop the suffering that is currently happening right now in saint hill and and elsewhere but in the uk is where my my focus is so if you look at the press for example that i've got from the protest i organized in november or yeah, the charity yeah. commission or whatever yeah. like most of the press yes has a quote from me as the organizer or as the instigator um but you won't find a single picture of me um in the photos of the protest that happened in november in the daily mail and the guardian and all of this uh, right. and i made sure of that because it's not about me it's about no. the protesters it's about yeah. the message and i couldn't care less if i was named in it or not the whole point is raising awareness of it and yeah. um you know that doesn't mean i won't be involved and that won't happen in the future you know there have been newspapers approach me to tell my story and do an interview with me and like features on me and so on and I'm open to that idea, but at the exactly. moment I've been exactly. focusing exactly. primarily on, well, yeah, we can approach that at some point, but the message I'm trying to get out is the the, the mm. abuse and the suffering. And that's right. why I'm doing it. Not because I want the, right. the media attention. No, I don't think you are. And, and, and just, I, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but just to recognize that I've heard stories of people picking up their child per, member from the sea or, you know, as recently as two or three years ago, again, and, and, and you gave a good answer for that. And you also confirmed that there is, there was child labor in the UK division. So I, I appreciate you clarifying that, but I just didn't. And want still to is. Like there are right, children right, who right, are no, still no, on staff, right, but right, there aren't any right, children in the right. Sea Org at St. Hill. But that doesn't right. mean there are public there aren't public, you know, like right, right. paying members of the public who are Scientologists that study at St. Hill, who have children who are being abused at St. Hill. Right. That right. very definitely is still happening. I mean, that's the thing. And, and they, they would make the argument that, well, if you don't really get to the, the bottom of this issue, therefore you're not truly exposing the true misdeeds of what Scientology has done. But at the end of the day, we're all agreeing that there is child labor and it is abundant, right? So it's like that's, you know, child labor is child labor, whether they be in the Sea Org or whether they but be not, something else. But not just child labor. Like my personal belief is that the practice of Scientology is dangerous and harmful in and of itself. So yes, of even, course. I'm even, just talking, just giving even their the child things. Right. But. Even, even the child of a parishioner who is not a member of the sea org or a, or a member of staff even the child of someone like that yeah. um, will be being abused if they are being forced to practice scientology you know sex checks and ethics lower conditions and auditing my personal belief is that is a form of child abuse regardless of whether there's labor involved in that but that's that's my personal opinion other people may disagree um and that's fine but my personal belief is the practice of Scientology is harmful. Right. And that, that's the main question. So uh, we'll get back. So when you were, it seems exciting when you were 15, man, I, so you joined staff fairly quickly. I, you know, I'm always curious because it's always different for each person. How many hours a day when you were young, did you commit to Scientology? Was it two? Was it like this almost like five day a week thing or do you drop in and out? So when you cite, so when I, when you first join, like, 
before you join staff right so when i was a public so i was 15 and it was around i think it was the end of 2010 that i did my oca or like it was around christmas new year period so 2011 right. is when i say i joined because right. i remember i started my first course in the first few months of 2011 and then i turned 16 in april of 2011 and i finished school in the may of 2011 because you okay. finished school at 16 in the well, UK, younger, right yes. not 18 Right. So as soon as I finished school, I joined staff. But right. and, until doing that... college or the UK is, I think it's like college and then you go to university or something. Yeah. So so in the UK, you finish school at 16, then you're done. Right. It's not like that now. Now you have to carry on until you're 18. But when oh. I was in school, you finish at 16 and then you go and do sixth formal college, which is two years optional. Don't have to do it. And then if you want to, when you turn 18, you can go to university. Right. But when I was young, 16, done. You can go and become, you can go and get a job. But you're right. still a child until you're 18. Right. Um, so, yeah, I was 15 when I when I joined Scientology. And the commitment was, you know, an hour or two a week. I would finish school Not on that. Wednesday and I would right. go up to, um, to the York and I'd study for an hour or two. And then I would go home once a week or two times right. a week or whatever, however much I could squeeze in. Um, and then when you join staff, you sign a two and a half or a five year contract. Um, right. And that is a full time commitment. So I joined the day organization because Scientology orgs are split into two day and foundation. Foundation is like evenings and weekends and day is the Monday to Friday, nine till six. Um, but you also have to remember I was posted in the in Div 6, which is the public facing division. So my job was book sales and promotion and recruitment and that sort of thing, which meant quite often I would stay out late in the evenings and go on the weekends to go book selling because it would be busier or there'd be, you know, rush hour or there's more people out and about on the now weekends. How would you sell books? Would you have a big table outside? Would you? Would you With stress have, tests, yes. We'd get the e meter. You'd have classic, and, like you've seen the New York City subway and stuff like that. So you had the yeah. classic stress test. Yep. And I'm always curious, nobody's ever talked about the numbers, but it's so fascinating that you've done the staff work, even to look at it as, as somebody who might be a telemarketer or anything in sales. What was the percent, like, how many people would sit down a day, approximately, it might be tough to remember, how many people would sit down a day and how many would you actually rope in? And nobody knows this information, like the protesters, they're doing a good job, they might be getting in you know, stopping one person from Scientology, but I do imagine that the other nine people out of 10 would have ignored it and not been interested anyway. So I'm always so curious, like, what's that success rate of people, A, who actually sit down, and B, what's the per vague percentage of people who sit down and say, oh, I want to go further? Oh, look at, ah, there you go. <laughs> this is the, this is the graph that I can show you. You came prepared um, for class. Very cool. <laughs> The, this is a year of book sales when I was on staff. So wow, okay. So what? And so what's the top? Like, what was the most books you sold? Oh, so by the time I left, the most would be like two hundred in a week. Wow. So you sold. See, Jesus. So at, at what? And each book was twenty bucks or something. Uh, like twelve or thirteen. So that you made thousand. That's impressive. Wow. Okay. So you were. And what? What was your two hundred a book? How many people would you contact a, a week? Then would it would it be five hundred? You know. I general don't know. passing communications you'd make yeah like look so we you know you've got to remember i was the most successful bookseller in the uk and david miscavige personally sent a film crew to come and film me and oh, how well. well we were doing in london at bookselling you know rachel hastings who mitch sure. knows from being at smp was the one that was sent to london we didn't we talked about it on my channel she was sent to london by miscavige and by people up in the executive strata to film what we're doing in London because we were so good at book selling and recruitment, you know, and you've also got to remember this was 10, 11 years ago now. So um, the success rate is going to be much lower now anyway, because they're sure. losing people, they're selling less books. I have the stats from an insider as to how many books they're selling and how many people they're getting in now. What's the difference if you know on the top of your head? It's decreased by about 33% that since much. I was in. And, yeah. and you were in that was and you were in you were talking like 2011 or something 2011 to 2014. so wow so uh, it so that's good that's a great message for people who are fighting it's like in intangible cold hard book sales it's declines by 30 percent and so that that's yeah. your chart wow and that's so go up and down i assume so this your chart was kind of a personal 
you're keep tracking you were keeping track of your sales i assume at that time no no this so this is total book sales oh. in london so ah, because london i was general. so i was director of public book sales by the time right. i left in 2014 so this is the total number of book sales in london and malta malta strangely is one of my territories because it was a mission right. that fell under my Fun. um Are you my, ever get to go there it. no i was about to go to go and do some drilling but it was so small they, they would sell like one or two books a week it was i okay. think the most they ever sold was six but um but no so this is total number of books sold in london cool. and so That's when nice. i started it was about 20 books a week right and then when i left it was about 200 books a week right. um and then the big peaks that you see here are when we had bookathons. So it's like big, like a, a competition to sell the most books versus so other. You're saying London, and not you sold 200, but London itself sold 200. Yeah. So London sold 200. And I would be, I would have sold the most out of those, right. like the, because I was the one in charge of it and I was really good at doing it. <laughs> I wonder um, if you, if you got, if you finished trying to sell books one day and you sold zero. Was there any uh, type of reprimands or anything? Um, so, yes, in a way, not in the kind of, you know, if we went out book selling and I didn't sell any books, I'm not going to get in trouble um, okay. because, but stats are done in a, on a weekly basis. So right. if my stat, were, my stat always went up, which was good, right. but if my stat was to ever go down, you know, and I sold less books this week than I did the week before, then yeah, I, I would do lower conditions. Um, but I don't actually recall ever having to do that because my stats were always up cool. apart from once or twice, in which case, yes, I had to do lower conditions, but it was kind of, it wasn't as bad as what people get in the Sea Org or as people report, if your stats were going up and up and up and then they suddenly crash and they stay like at right. a lower point, then yeah, there's, there's worse reprimands. But for me, we we just made it work you know right right early riser asks so alex what are your tactics selling books what was so there's a whole book sales pattern that you have to use um and the stress test and so right. the whole point is to manipulate and to guilt trip and to invade someone's privacy you know there's a policy that says you have to invade someone's privacy in order to sell them the book now, when you're in Scientology, you think that you're doing the greatest good, right? You think right. that you, right? what I'm doing is finding out what the problem is that's right. causing so you, you the most... You didn't see manipulating or trying to... It was more of a subconscious thing, I assume. Um, no, so you're no, you're you're overtly doing this and you're right. aware okay, that you're doing it. Right. But you think right. you're doing it because you're helping them. So right. if right. I could find out what's causing you the most amount of stress or pain or suffering in your life, right. yeah, it might be uncomfortable for you to address that or talk about it or whatever. You might not want to talk about it. But if I persist and I get you to tell me what your problem is, then I can present this book as the solution because I fully believed at the time that Scientology is what is going to help you and, and cure that problem. So I'm aware I'm invading your privacy and I'm aware that I'm going to make you cry. Right. However, I'm doing it because actually I'm going to help you in the long term and therefore it's worth it. It's the greatest good. That's how you feel at the time. Now, when you leave, you find out that you know, it's never appropriate to re-traumatize someone or trigger someone or right. get them to go into a part of their life they don't want to. And now I recognize that. But at the time, um, I didn't. Right. And and this is, and I want to ask another follow because we only have a half hour more and I want to move on to obviously what you're doing with East Grinstead and, and, sure. and uh, your current work as well. But there's, I will start by saying there's been some consternation that you were in and then you left and you came back. As for somebody who who was paying attention, like if you were less specific than you should have been about dates, like as, or as somebody who was a never in, like it seems so esoteric and inside baseball. It's like, to me, honestly, quite frankly, it's like, who gives a shit? But I did want to, you know, uh, give you an opportunity. So you left and one of the, which again, is like, I, why? Like, let's talk about it, but also like, who cares? Um, so you left initially because your mother knew somebody who was a potential trouble source. And some of the criticism was, well, it must've been so bad as much. What did you do? It must've been worse than that. must've been like, who can, like, I don't, if it was something so bad or something private, like, I don't know how that's relevant to anything or, or, you know, analyzing your current work in Scientology. But if you want to explain it, what was the reason for leaving Scientology well, and then for I think 
I think firstly, um, what I'm really confused about is people have said that my story has changed or that right. I'm lying about my story. And I've not actually been given a sim single example of something that has changed. Nor have I. Um, and so That's I'm happy to... It. I'm happy to clear any of those things up, but no right. one has actually said, this is something you said here, and this is something right. you said here, and it's different. So if anyone could give me an example, I'm more than happy to address that. But as of today, no one has, has actually given me an example of something that's changed. Um, in terms of why I was kicked out and so on, I mean, look, the answer is the same as you that I gave when I first did my interview with Chris Shelton, and right. again, when I spoke to Aaron, and again, every time that i've done the interview i've given the example and all of these people also have all of the documents you know you've got to remember that when i when i left the first time and then i was kicked out because i left then i got kicked out and right. then i rejoined right. um when i rejoined there was a board of review that scientology right. did where they agreed the reason i was kicked out shouldn't have happened it didn't make sense it that wasn't done well. properly right right so you said when it was people like discovered when, an accidental phone call through a checkup kind of but right. but essentially when when like people like aaron are saying you know that and nora have said you know i must be so bad the dsa called me up and then that means you're pr properly insane and you've done something really right. bad against the church you're not being honest about um no because there's right. and i've shared the documents with these people that show that when i came back they the board of review said yeah the dsa shouldn't have kicked alex out because right. there wasn't anything that had happened right. that would have warranted that and to, they have a vibe of paranoia right and some there might be specific staff members who are so on their hind legs that they do this one little conclusion they have that power to say goodbye and then all of a sudden it's analyzed and i then... think i think what it is because it was the is event that was the um it was the night before the is event that they called up and said you can't come. I think it was the DSA because the DSA is in charge of the protection of Miscavige and Scientology and all of this. So like the OSA are not going to let anybody who potentially has a connection to an SP anywhere right. near Miscavige. So my having thought about it over time now, my assumption is that because there was this connection that my mum had to right. an SP, the night before the IES event, the, the DSA was like, look, Makes we sense. haven't yeah. investigated who the person is. Right. We haven't investigated Protecting whether your mum actually knows them or not. So it's, it's not OK for you and your mum to come to the IES event. And right. we're not going to let you in the org until we investigate further. So don't come back. And then a year or 18 months or whatever it was went by right. that uh, and and nothing was done about it. So then when I got picked up by flag. And the board review looked into it. They were like, yeah, so they, we should have done the investigation to find out who this SP is and whether it's a danger or a threat or not. Um, but we never did. So, you know, you can come back. I, yeah. That's how I think it ended up happening. Cool. And it, it's yeah, I, I that makes perfect legitimate sense. And I, I do think the argument is odd in the first place. It's like, you, you know, I know you're it seems like you're being honest about it because it's like if the question is, what did you do so bad that made Scientology? angry if that was actually the case you think you'd be the first person to say this is how i pissed off the church of scientology uh well, yeah and, and also it's, it's, like a, said, it's a badge I, of honor that's why i think that the whole argument is very odd to me what what it, the thing that's odd to me is like i have all my documents from this the time this will happen and right. all of the reports and right. i have shared them all with aaron and right. have made them available to people who want them and have gone through them all on my channel so if there's like this is what doesn't make sense to me is like i literally i have all the reports that right. outline exactly what i reported and what scientology reported and how it will unfolded so for someone to say that i'm lying or that it's changed simply hasn't done the homework or right. has a an ulterior motive and i'm not going to yeah. accuse anybody of either thing it could be yes. ignorance or it could be an ulterior motive i don't know and i honestly couldn't care less but my story hasn't changed um, and I've made all my documents available. I've been honest about them. If someone chooses not to accept that, that's right. fine. I don't care. It's not going to stop me stop me from spending all day every day trying to stop the currently happening abuse and yes. suffering in Scientology. Respect. Yeah. And 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 you know, I'll 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 just remark that obviously I'm still a, uh, very much 100 percent a supporter of Aaron and appreciate his work. Uh, but some of this stuff uh, can be very 
inside baseball. And uh, so I'm glad we addressed it and talked about it so that you, you came in, uh, you came back in. Uh, what were you, what were you, what was it like when you came back in? Were you well received? Were you able to maintain the same friendships that you maintained? Did people have this kind of disrespect for you? Um, uh, no, and because I that he's in the chat just saying hi, but yeah. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like what, what that, transition is like yeah because i was never declared an sp or anything at that right. point so right, right. it was it was very much yeah you should have uh, you shouldn't have been kicked out and welcome back and yeah, you're all good far. to go and so let's right, let's right. pick up where we left off and right. um i was posted as director of public book sales given responsibilities cool. and let's go out book selling and we had a great time doing it um cool. cool and then what was so we'll talk about now more of your current story and we'll start with uh, I also want to say hi to a few people. Uh, Clearwater Chad is here. Big fan of his. Old G. Hello. Um, and uh, a few earlier comments. Uh, yeah. And Early Riser agrees with you. We seem to be focusing on this is a previous conversation uh, only in the C org abuses. But what about how COS treats children in general? Right. I think that's the focus. Liz Gale talked about it numerous times. So I don't think it's ever the title of the video. So just some FYI information. So what, what was the straw that broke the camel? camel's back uh in terms of you leaving that subsequent time and how many so you took a year and a half break uh you must have only been in before you got kicked out for what like a year or something mm -hmm. right so you took a year and a half break and then how many years or year were you were you in so i got yeah so i left staff in the like september or something because i went to sixth form and then the is event is october okay so there was a month or so that i was a, a public again and right. then was phoned up just before the IES event in October. And then I wasn't picked up until I don't have the document in front of me. But, you know, that was 2011. So right. I rejoined staff in 2013. So I think I say it's two years because it's 2011 to 2013. But when I think about it, it's probably actually only 18 months that I okay. was offline. Because it was earlier in the year that I rejoined in 2013. So, yeah, 18 months-ish. And then I did the board review and rejoined staff and then when i left in 2014 at the end of 20 uh, uh, at some point in 2014 it was because i was upset that the first time i got kicked out everybody that i all of these friends i just made um were they stopped talking to me and i was upset and you know i was treated like i was an enemy and i'd done something wrong and i hadn't and i just started to feel like a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose and suddenly i'm cast aside wow. and so i was upset about that so when they did the board of review and they said we shouldn't have done that it didn't make me feel better yeah. um so there was a whole program of like trying to handle it and essentially long story short i went into a session to try and handle the upset and i came out feeling worse and so i was complaining because all the things meant to make you feel better not worse and I was trying to apply Scientology correctly because that's what you do in Scientology. Right. Um, and essentially, they took that to mean that I was complaining Scientology doesn't work. Yeah, and that was something that wasn't bought too, which like to me that totally like I, I – and we'll address that the last thing we'll address – is like, you know, some people have said it's been far-fetched because they say you complain too much, but it's like, you know, I I almost got fired from a my news job for saying that they were fake news when I didn't feel like they're covering something effectively. So that's in any environment. If you if you openly criticize, you're gonna get camped. Well, yeah, and, and also Scientology is a totalitarian extremist belief system, right? In, in right, KSW, in K KSW, it is keeping Scientology working. It basically makes it clear that Scientology works 100% of the time. And if it's not working, it's because it's not being done correctly. It's right, not right. because Scientology doesn't work. Right. And so they interpreted my complaints to meaning me saying that Scientology doesn't work rather than Scientology is not working right now because it's been done incorrectly. It's a nuance, but it means a lot in Scientology. And yeah. so the reason it's not working is because you've done something right. wrong against the church because that's the only reason. So I was locked in a room and I couldn't um, leave until I confessed to what I've done wrong. And, you know, there's that whole handling thing of like, what have you done Right. to pull this in right. to make and it then, so yeah. that you're right. upset and you're right. the fault you're the problem right. and right. yeah eventually right. i was essentially given my um staff dismissal and my potential right. trouble source declare escorted right. to my desk and then the door and said don't come back but you have to well 
do come back after you've done your return program. And then you're kind of just like, screw it, I assume. To uh, no, I carried on doing my return program oh. for several years. So I wow. was kicked out. So, yeah, so I was declared a potential trouble source 2014. But I still did my return program um, religiously until 2016, right. um, doing a lesson or several lessons every single week by extension course. Um, and then kind of drifted away over that period of time because I wasn't in Scientology every single day. I right. wasn't allowed in the buildings, but right. I was trying to make amends nice and repair it so that I could go back. Um, and then, yeah, because after two years of not really being in the building, um, you drift away, you're not being indoctrinated. And the last lesson I ever submitted of an extension course was 2018. Um, but I stopped considering myself a Scientologist probably around 2016, because that's when I stopped doing lessons every single day or every week or whatever. Interesting. But I wasn't, I left being on staff in 2014. So I was kicked out in 2014, but right. was still a Scientologist until 2016. And then 2018 was when I finally was like okay i'm not going to do any more lessons and then i started speaking out um in december 2022 so a year and a half ago Recently. right right and, and i'm glad to talk with you because one of the last things is some people are you know don't like that you had a relatively decent experience in scientology and goodwill but that's what makes it even cooler that you're here uh fighting against that because it's you know some people say well you know, you shouldn't talk because you don't have that same painful experience. But no, I mean, we need all perspectives and we need it. You know, it indicates that even when everything is working and even when everything is is seems to be good for you, you still see the harm in the cult, which takes a lot of uh, independence well, initiative to do. If, yeah, I wouldn't quite agree with that, because what you've got to remember is that Scientology's harm is deeper than I think people realize, you know. Yes, like, yes of course. I talk way, about exactly. in I, I talked about enjoying going out book selling, but that doesn't mean I didn't have harmful or traumatic experiences on the side of that. That was right. one you aspect. You were locked in a room to confess your sins and that you were kind of imprisoned in a, in a way. Yeah, go, yeah, going out book selling was my job, but that's only right. one aspect of what life is like in Scientology. And I've always said from the very beginning that, you know, I had a traumatic experience and it, I was vulnerable yes. and abused and so on. But... There are people who had it far worse. You know, I wasn't yes, in the sea, I mean. and I wasn't ever put in the hole. I wasn't right. ever personally beaten up by David Miscavige. You right. know, there are people who have had horrible, horrible experiences. Right. And so when I started doing the healing process of like, okay, what, how do I start processing the trauma that I have? And I, as part of that, start learning about all these other people who've had it far worse. Right. Then I feel compelled to do what I can to, you know, make amends for the trauma that I caused by recruiting people, Respect. but also yeah. raise awareness to stop other people from doing it. And yeah. one of the things, this is what I tied it, tying into what I said earlier about Scientology being harmful in and of itself is like, because you're young, your neural pathways aren't completely fully developed. So it teaches you and programs your brain to think in a certain way. So when I had not been in an org for 10 years um, or nine years or whatever it was, and I realized in a conversation I was having with a friend that I was still doing something that was manipulative. I was right. still applying a Scientology technique without yes. realizing it. Even though I hadn't set foot in all for 10 years, I hadn't done an extension course for four years. I, I realized in the moment I was still doing a Scientology technique. That's when I realized that it's damaging and harmful wow. under the surface, not just your mental health, but it's actually it changes my it's changing my effect of my and, behavior. And when you so were that's doing when this, I was like, OK, maybe I need to do some right. more work on this. Right. And so when you were doing this kind of on your own, was it purely on your own? Was it like just you researching the books? Uh, or was there still some communication with other people, whether it be did anybody audit you or whatever? Or is it like if you're not allowed in the building, are you kind of cold turkey from any, you know, it doesn't have to be a uniquely internal thing? Yeah, so I was declared a potential trouble source. So my right. only terminal was the chaplain at London Org um, or my okay. course supervisor. So I was doing extension courses with Flag actually at the time. You, that's so fascinating. So they'll still let you pay. Did you, did you pay them? Yeah. So they'll, they'll still let you pay them, even if you're a potential trouble store. They'll still let yeah, you because, pay them for yeah, because as yeah, because as a return program, right? So I wasn't right. a suppressive person, 
and it was like right. cool you're a potential trouble source but right. th there always has to be a route back into good graces with the church and so i was making right. my way through that return program so yeah. i was doing that with flag over by extension course online so i would have calls weekly with the course supervisor and stuff with flag right. I, I i was speaking to london org trying to handle things I was speaking to the um, the um, Continental Justice Chief in St. Hill, trying to handle the situation so that I could get back on staff and back into good graces. Right, right. Uh, well, I want to read a few comments. All good. Uh, may the force be with you. Alex could read a phone book. I'd pay attention. Wish I had a legit Brit accent. I agree. <laughs> Communicator. Uh, and OBG Foster notes for me, don't criticize the company. New uh, rule number one for any employment. Um, what about the planet of the Ape seventies original movies? Were you glued to a beanbag chair in the sunken living room, wall to wall shag carpet? That's an esoteric. I haven't seen that in a long time. Uh, Alex, very proud of you for protesting. Says Marissa Robertson. Must have been difficult for you to deprogram yourself. Exactly. Um, and uh, lots of opposition. Had relatively good experience. He owned his own house when he joined staff. Are you? I guess that's talking about you. That owned your own. Oh, Marvin. I, guess. Um, I have no idea who that's about. I still don't own my own house. The idea of huh. owning a house in London before the age of 30 is just yes. not going to happen. No. Um, before the age of 40, you'd be lucky. Um, I, think Marvin or something. I don't, I've never owned my own house no. and likely <laughs> never will with the current state. <laughs> you and me both, pal. Welcome to our generation. Um, so uh, let then let's obviously, so you realize this is, this is BS. Tell me about your first, uh, inkling to get to protest. Where was that first protest? How did you organize? Yeah. And how the hell so, did you get all this this press? Like, well done. Thanks. I mean, yeah. that's what I do for a living. So I work in marketing um, right. and PR. Yeah. So my job is to promote and to raise awareness of you know whether it's an architect or a designer or a musician or whatever that I'm working with in the creative fields. That's my job. So I right. thought, let's apply my skills to this activism and this good cause. So, you know, building relationships with journalists and building relationships with politicians and all this sort of stuff, the people that can affect change. Um, it's just, it's second nature to me. So, of course, I'm going to do that. And that's what I've been doing. And that's why we've got the results that we've had so far. But it's very much at the beginning of a very long journey. Um, but your question was why I started protesting. I started my channel um, about a year ago because I wanted to give a platform. 10K or even more than that in just a year. Yeah. Um, cool. I wanted to give a platform to other people to share their experiences because at the yeah. time when I joined YouTube, um, there weren't any other British ex-Scientologists who had a channel where they were committed to uploading stuff regularly. That doesn't mean there weren't people who had YouTube videos and there weren't people that had done it in the past. But, you know, at the time, there were no British voices creating right. content regularly. Copter, but she might be relatively recent as well. So Kelly Copter had a channel years before I had a channel. Okay. Um, she did a series and then disappeared off YouTube for a few years. Okay. And then she restarted her channel up cool. after um, after I'd started my channel. I don't think it was related, but in terms of timeline, because um, I remember interviewing her and having on my having her on my channel um, when she started cool. creating more regular content. So when I started my channel, there were no um, British voices really. Right. Um, that were committed to creating content regularly about Scientology. And there certainly weren't any class five staff members, right? Everybody on YouTube at the time was a Sea Org member from the US. And so what I wanted to do is give a voice to the people that were working at class five city level orgs and also give a British voice. But mostly it was just let's talk about this thing. Let's give people a platform to share their experiences and I can share my experience. And that was that. Then in November, um, we had the IES event. I mean, it was October when we first heard about it. And I was like, well, that's the first international Scientology event that has happened for four years. David Miscavige is going to be here. It's being marketed as the greatest gathering of Scientologists. So there's a lot riding on this. It's going to be a huge event. Right. Of course, I'm going to protest like there's not yeah. there is not a world in which I'm not going to be there in protest. So 
decided to protest and then started promoting it and yeah ended up being the largest protest against scientology in the uk for 15 years the last time that number of people gathered in one place to protest scientology in the uk was the anonymous movement in 2008 he legendary how the heck do you promote something like that do you just send a million emails you're on different i guess i guess you know people who could send out the right press releases like it's just fascinating I've how wrote, you got I've, big numbers out of thin air it's kind of bad yeah so i immediately started very quickly finding out which journalists to contact building relationships with them i contacted a couple of journalists that i already had relationships right. with um so you know a thing or two from you note to self well yeah this is what i mean this is what i do for a job right is right. marketing and promotion so i already right. have connections <laughs> with journalists with pr people with oh, lawyers badass. with the people who promote stuff because that's what i do so i just activated those relationships i already had um right. and yeah got an article in the guardian got an article in yeah. the daily mail um and promoted it on my channel and did what I could. And yeah, I personally cool. was surprised that just under 50 people showed up. I thought I would have been happy if 10 or 20 people, sure. but no, we had, oh, I think 46 or 48, yeah. which was huge. Yeah. Um, you've also got to remember St. Hill is in the middle of bloody nowhere. So it's not exactly convenient for a thousand people to get there. Um, yeah, it's because urban, right? It's yeah. hard to get to. It's right. not urban. It's, it's in the it's middle of nowhere. It's, it's ex-urban. It's Medium. rural. It's right, that's, what I'm that's another word for extra. I guess that's an American right. term, but that would be the sub, you know, the outer ring of this, not even the suburbs, but even more rural, but close enough to a big city with hour, hour and a half. Consider that extra. No, it, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's like, oh, it's really? Close. Yes, it's that rural. Yeah. How far yeah. is it from London? Um, on the train, about an hour and a half. Okay, see, I that's different. All right, well, that's just semantics because in America, an hour and a half is nothing, but right in the UK, it's so tiny, like an hour and a half is like a different. Whole, totally different seat it's um, in the middle of nowhere you can't right. get anywhere without right. a car um right. you no know, bus there's, there's no whatever. well yeah there might be a bus stop but there'll probably yeah, only be one bus that runs an hour right. to the local right. village like it's not it's right. the middle of nowhere so it's not easy for a large number of people to assemble oh. there so i was surprised that 48 or 46 i can't remember just yeah. under 50 people showed up like i was like wow yeah. um and you've got to remember i was only promoting it for four weeks because we only had four weeks notice that the is event was going to happen so it was very rushed and very quick and yeah i was surprised and massive respect to everyone that showed up for and and yeah. um, came along right I, I i think um people should connect with you and i certainly will too uh because i'm traveling the country and i certainly have an interest in stopping by these places if one of the less accessible uh one of the less accessible locations because really only three Scientology places, honestly, you could think of uh, the Austin one, which is foot traffic heavy because of, of uh, you know, the you know, Texas, of uh, Campbell, UT. Uh, and then of course you have Los Angeles and you have Clearwater, which is pedestrian friendly. And you have New York City, which is pedestrian friendly. You go to the one in Sandy Springs, Georgia, that's, you know, in a cul-de-sac and that's the majority of them. So, you know, I'm gonna certainly connect with you is if something is happening with a less pedestrian accessible place what's the, the tactic and that's something i wanted yeah. to think uh, about like gold the gold base in la is about a two-hour drive from any from la as far as i'm aware right. the gold base is you know rural in the middle of nowhere it's remote um it's the same with saint hill like you know if right, 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 saint right. hill doesn't have a big wire fence around the edge but it does have motion sensors but it's a sort of place where if you were to jump the wall um You've got at least a half an hour walk to the nearest town, which is right. East Grinstead. But even then, East Grinstead is filled with Scientology. Like, you know, there's no way you could really go um, because it's in the middle of nowhere. The gold base is slightly more remote than St. Hill because at least St. Hill has East Grinstead nearby. Um, but it's down a dark country lane. There's only one road in and out of that property. And it's there's no buildings around apart from a couple of houses down at St. Hill Green. Right. Uh, I just want to read a few more comments. May the force be with you. Uh, Alex, great work. I have empathy for you and you have done far better than I at your age. I was a hot mess avoiding authority figures and a mess emotionally. In short, well, yeah, this is something to remember. I'm the youngest SPTV right. creator, ex-Scientologist. Right. You know, I'm, right. I'm 28 right. years old right. and I'm very much at the start of this yeah. um, journey. Sure. I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. Um, 
you know and well, i'm so i'm by no means life, but yeah. i'm i'm by no means healed um yeah. you know this is a journey and everyone has their own experience in Scientology. Yep. Everyone has yep. their own trauma and every single person and their experience is valid and unique. And that's OK. There are similarities, but there's also differences. Yes. And it's the same with protesting. Right. I can talk about how I've gone about this and I can talk about my activism, not just protesting, but, you know, doing getting the authorities to investigate, building relationships with politicians, all of this stuff. I can talk about that because I've done it, but that doesn't mean that's the only way or it's the right way. Sure, of course. Right? Right, right, right. right. Everyone has their own way of contributing to this and right. doing the activism in their own way. And that's fine. There isn't a right or wrong way. I think that the more different approaches there are, the better, because it's like a multi-pronged attack. Um, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I want to get some other uh comments, just some silly ones. I am as old as Dodge has played shirt. I was wearing a shirt yesterday from 1962. Uh, I have aged equally as well. Well done. And then he asked, Dodge, have you worn what my dad wore? High ankle boots in the 70s and polyester leisure suits. Mom hated them in those. I will not wear the high boots, but I ha I have two leisure suits, including a powder blue one from the 70s. So maybe I'll I'll bust that out someday. Uh, and old G, nobody has clothes like my boy Dodge. So we're, I'll talk about that. Uh, the last slight controversy I want to get, and then I want to talk about East Grinstead. And you only have so much time, so you know, tell me when you need to hop off. But some have expressed consternation that you've, and I think it's only highlight. I don't think you've been directly critical, but that you have highlighted a difference in approach, especially because you've, and it's a different type of event and different type of environment, and you made sure to state that. But you've been able to connect with the police, inform them that you're there at the protest, makes for perhaps better ease of movement. You could better be heard. Uh, some have said, you've said the other, uh, some of the people have been a little too out there. I don't know if you've directly said that. I will say everybody has their styles and that might've been more of what you're saying. When I was out in Chicago, I respected the hell out of Shannon, you know, my good friend who is, you know, balls to the wall. I'm just, I'm too polite. I can't eat because I'm a never in. It's like, I, I shouldn't, but part of me still feels like uh, I don't like like directly saying mean things to people. So, I've yeah, never want to address that. I've never been critical of any of the protesters in LA. Oh, people that, people have go. been people have been critical of me not covering it um, on my channel. And okay. I've always been open in saying, well, that's because there are plenty of channels covering the protests in LA. I've I've I've, I've gotten I've, the same criticism too, you know. I've, I've well, I've never been to LA. Um, right. My content is mostly about my activism here in the UK. My website, ScientologyBusiness.com, is focused exclusively on the UK and Europe. Um, people protesting in America, it's just simply not relevant to right. what I'm doing here yeah, in the like UK that. beyond right. saying, hey, look, there's these people protesting right. and they're doing great work. Right. I've always yeah. supported it when anyone's asked yeah. me about it, but yeah. people have been very critical of me not doing videos about it on my channel. Right. And that's why, because that's not what my channel is about. And right. there are lots of people who are covering it and fantastic. Yeah. I have yeah. never been critical of them because I think it's great. I think that there's no right or wrong way to protest. Right. There's the way that I did it in November and again right. in March and will be tomorrow in Sunderland. Um, but, yes, you know, there's, right. there's, cul there's cultural differences. There's um, sure. Sure. legal law differences. Um, but ultimately, it's like, well, I'm doing things the way that I feel is right in the circumstance. Right. Um, but that doesn't right. mean there aren't other ways that are right. And that doesn't mean other ways are wrong. You know, yeah. I organized a one off protest for Peter an Hill. event at St. Hill for the IES event. And in order to do that, because I wanted to do a march in the street, I had to apply for the road to be closed. I had to build relationships with the police. And there's certain processes in place that I had to do in order to do that. Um, that doesn't mean people who don't do that are wrong and it's not appropriate to apply for a road closure when you're standing outside an org shouting and protesting like fight you know that's a different protest with a different message for a different purpose so you i always encourage people to protest in the way that they think is right right um there isn't a, any wrong way of doing it just think about the purpose you know if your purpose is to reach current scientologists um you know, shouting things like Xenu at them isn't going to make someone leave Scientology. And I know from personal 
experience i've had people shout xenia and space alien at me when i was at this in in um Tottenham court road um and it didn't make me change my belief sure. but what it does do is stop people walking in and joining and that's fine like that's cool but just think I, about your message is is what yeah, i said I, but I, there isn't a right or wrong way and i encourage and support anybody in their fight against scientology and if there's a personal difference or disagreement again I support the fight. <laughs> you know, I may not yeah, like someone as a person, but that doesn't mean I don't support the message. Perfect. Yeah, I'm glad we put that to bed because I, I seen people commenting and I looked for it and can never find a single word that you ever actually said. Of, I've seen people commenting saying you criticize the protest. And I'm like, I don't think you ever have. I think you were just talking about your relationship with the police and, and different styles and, and going out of your way to point out that you respect both and they have different styles. So I appreciate that. Uh, again, we don't have a ton of time. If you need to go, no worries. I feel bad that we spent a chunk of the talk about the controversy, but you handled it well. It handled it with aplomb. Peter Anderson has a quick question. Um, are you going to cover the Toronto event next weekend, Alex? Any chance PTS for Life will let you mod for him while he protests? And you promote content. I, I'd like to. I'm in New York. I mean, if I lived, if I was in back home in New York, I could just drive up and, and that's very easy. I'm now in Louisiana. So that's a hell of a lot tougher. Um, but maybe if there, that people want some support, I could certainly fly in. And, and I love Toronto. Toronto is a bit to Toronto nine, nine, ten times. Um, and uh, so I well, wanted to. Uh, uh, yeah, here's well, a fun. What's well, up? I was, I was going to answer that part of the question that was for me. So, Alex, yes, any please, class please, PTS please, or please. life? Yeah, so I'm I'm still a mod on Jeff's channel. Um, he's just been doing different streams at times where I've not been there. But um, as far as I'm aware, I'm still his mod. We're still friends, oh. um, and I'll be there to support him whenever I can. And he pops into my chats and mods for me. Um, it's just we live on different time zones. Um, you know, I'm I've been historically I've been very U.S. focused in terms of sure. my time, and I've been sure. up in the middle of the night. Um, and living on a Pacific time, even though I'm here in the UK. Um, but the last month or so specifically, because I've had meetings with politicians and um, law right. enforcement and what investigators and so on, I've had to be on a UK time zone. So I've been getting to bed a lot earlier. Right, right. Uh, and may the force be with you, Alex. I encourage you. I moved to London alone in 82, lived for a year, but hell no, I didn't talk to anyone to change anything for helping children and society. You are a force. And Marissa asked a great, great question. Alex, did you even know about Xenu when you were in? Yeah, I mean, look, I worked in Div 6, so I had people almost every day coming in and saying, do you believe in Xenu? Do you believe in space aliens? And, right, right. Um, I would always be like, no, because nothing I've read uh has anything to it aliens and nothing says xenu and you know i what i would always say is that people misinterpret l ron hubbard's science fiction writing as the scriptures of scientology that's a great ready incorrect. answer <laughs> that's a really and, good ready answer interesting yeah I, I would say no look l ron hubbard did um science fiction before he started right. researching the mind and so people sure. think we believe his stories about space aliens and it's just not true that's that's the, the work he did to fund his research and right. um that's how i would answer it but i well, never reached ot3 so i never got to the point where i would course, know right. Right. that Very actually true. xenu is a real scientology scripture right uh so let's talk about some of the meat some of the uh first talk about the kind of disturbing relationship of the east grinstead town council with scientology and i think you uncovered a lot that wasn't uncovered before yeah so i knew that the mayor had gone to saint hill at the IES event and taken a fifty thousand pound check for his charity and started wow. to look into that and be like hey why do you think that's acceptable and I wrote him an email and he was engaged with a resident on twitter in some sort of debate and uh, someone sent it to me and i then pitched in and started pulling the thread and it turns out it was a much more complex issue than i realized i knew that safe pointing would have happened to some extent i didn't realize it was going to be that prevalent and it turns out out of the 16 councillors on the town council only four of them have never been to a scientology event or have never supported wow. scientology or don't or don't appear in a scientology promo video um so essentially yeah i just started you know complaining about it and i went oh, to a council meeting and um spoke during the public questions and asked questions and did all of this um and what they did is 
came back full force attack and called me a vexatious bully and said that I wasn't allowed to submit Freedom of Information Act requests and that I'm trying to disrupt council meetings. Right. They, 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 they got mad at you for a FOIA request, which is like the fun They got major mad at me and it was right. it was textbook right. Scientology operation because it was textbook not just this person's annoyed us, it's no, this person is the enemy. So let me... Um, let and me they, they did everything they can to try and stop me from speaking out on social media and so on. So I submitted a complaint that then got a, had a hearing last week where they, they came back and said, yeah, we shouldn't have redacted the meeting minutes. But they redacted the public record. They censored me. Wow, they censored dude. other people that have spoken out. And so one of the relationships I'd been building over the last year is with a journalist at the Daily Mail who was more than happy to work on an article yeah, nice. that we did. And that came out on the 1st of April. Yes. Um, that exposed all of this to the the public. So here's a, here's so with the with the town council people specifically addressing you and uh, you know do you think their direct messages were crafted by be, someone behind the scenes of Scientology? Do you think they said here's what you should say, or do you think they kind of just got the general feel for it? I don't know, and I don't think we will ever know. Um, sure, of course not. You know, right. It's hard. It's hard, right. and I don't want to speculate. All I can say is that this is what happened, and it is um, almost textbook OSA operation. It is almost perfectly mirror um, to how Scientology would do it. Whether that's a coincidence or not, I don't know, and that's just speculation. Right. Right, but right. I will say, as I said, 14 out of the 16 councillors – sorry, no um, – 12 out of the 16 councillors have been to Scientology events regularly. A bunch of them have gone to Tom Cruise film premieres. Um, wow. There were... There's like a look at the fun connections kind of type thing. Yeah. And also yeah. consider that there is a Scientology representative at every single council meeting. Um, the relationship is strong and it runs deep. So their involvement in the council's handling of this, I don't know. But right. those are the facts. There's a Scientology rep at every council meeting. They've gone to all of the events and all of this. Wow. Make your own mind up is what I would say. When, when, when are all their next elections? Um, so one of the councillors resigned recently because of this whole issue of Scientology. Oh, wow. I should have done my research. So, Skit, congrats. Yeah, so so wow. there's, a sing there's one, there's a by-election basically happening on the 2nd of May um, to fill that oh. seat. Okay. And then next year is the whole council full election. What's the opponent like? Is the opponent, have you had any communication? Or I think there the are four different like people. I think there are four different people running. Um, there's one or two who overtly stand out as against Scientology. Um, the other two, I don't know. Yeah, be wary of that. Uh, and then speaking of which, you did something that is incredibly significant. Uh, which obviously a lot of people paying attention to Scientology understandably don't have this deep interest in politics. But the way, the way, quite frankly, to defeat Scientology is to revoke the tax-exempt status. If I am not mistaken, you are the first person to get an, an elected official on either side. you got a member of parliament. I believe the first African-American woman member of parliament is an interesting figure. You got her to call for that, which is kind of huge. Uh, so tell me how that happened. Um, I don't know whether it's true that I'm the first, because as I said, there's there's been decades of activism before me. Right, but I'm wondering a... if a go but I don't think any governor or U.S. That's why I'm saying, the well, only thing I'm saying is I don't think any governor, U.S. senator has spoken out. Like it's well, again, I don't. I, I don't know because that's the US and I'm here in the UK. Yeah, but the research that I've done members of members of parliament have definitely issued statements that are not supportive of Scientology in the past. Right. Um, but as far as I'm aware, this is the first time a senior elected official in the UK has formally requested an investigation into Scientology for fraud. Yes, that is, as far as I'm aware, the first time that's happened. Um, the, so Diane Abbott is a... Um, not African American. Uh, bottoms up says she's not. Obviously, she's yeah, not. she's not African American. I, I met black or British or African. Diane Abbott is the back. was the first elected black female to Parliament in the UK, and she she's quite controversial. Like a lot of people, um, you know, don't like her, and she is actually the most abused member of Parliament. Fifty percent of all hate mail towards female MPs is actually directed personally at she her. Labeled? 
she was Labour, then she lost the whip because of a controversial statement that she said that was misinterpreted. And, you know, she's probably going to get the whip restored before the next general election here in the UK. Okay. But anyway, regardless, she's controversial. Um, and she is the most attacked member of parliament in the UK. Cool. But regardless, nonetheless, that I didn't approach her specifically for any of those reasons. I approached her because she's my local MP, right? She represents my area. Yeah. So my first port of call when it comes to what can I do in the political space to try and get this as a debate in parliament or whatever, the first port of call is to write to your local representative who just so happens to be Diane Abbott. So right. I wrote to her in September and I just said, hi, as my local MP, what can you do to help me in this situation and raise awareness? And much to my surprise, she responded to me, not just with advice, but she said, I have written to oh. the tax office and requested they investigate Scientology for fraud. You. So she'd already gone and done something about it before she'd replied to me. And then since then, I've developed a relationship with her and have met her personally. I've met her secretary and we're working on a few things behind the scenes to get other members of parliament involved and not just looking at their finances and tax, but we're also looking at things like modern slavery. We're looking at um, minimum wage laws like there are lots of different right. strands to this that we're looking at but yes. the first port of call is to write to my local representative and yeah by doing what i do with marketing which is building relationships with people by applying that same strategy with the politicians it's ended up where we are now which is fantastic and then there's the narconon investigation as well you know narconon which is scientology's drug rehabilitation center is currently under investigation by the charities commission and the care quality commission which is the watchdog regulator for drug rehab centers they are both investigating narconon off the back of a multi-page uh, multi-month report done by the guardian the observer which took about 10 months of work behind the scenes scenes with the journalist um and i'm now working with the investigators on that as well so i very much have been working on this stuff full time for the last year and will continue to do so um but that doesn't mean i'm always going to be on youtube making videos about it because a lot of it's behind the scenes but yeah the, the major things in the uk right now are the investigation to their finances for fraud we're trying to get it to be debated in parliament where um, there's an investigation to knock on like all of this stuff is huge major news and it's a shame that certain other channels aren't able to overlook their personal disagreements with people to cover this big news yes. um because everything that i'm doing is not about me if you right. look at the press you look at the daily mail you look at the guardian that have exposed yeah, all this stuff it's world. Yeah, it, it's I've made a point of making sure that the article focuses on the news and not on me. Um, and the fact that um, the former Shadow Home Secretary has requested Scientology's investigated into fraud, um, you know, that's huge news. And if other channels don't want to cover it, that's fine. Like, be my guest. I don't care. But, you know, if you claim to be interested in talking about the news when it comes to Scientology and reporting on major news across the world. Well, that's pretty major news. And you can do that without mentioning me. Um, and you can do that, whatever. I'm the sort of person that I look over personal disagreements. And right. if Aaron or any of those people want to do a video with me, absolutely i would say yes you know oh, one nice. of the things a lot of people have criticized me for if like oh you're just sharing mark mike and claire and um and tony ortega and chris shelton you're only sharing their stuff on twitter and they're sharing all of your stuff and i'm like well yeah i'm sharing their stuff because they're reporting on the stuff that i'm doing um i haven't shared much of Aaron's stuff because he hasn't done any content about any of the work that I'm doing right. and if he did do content about it I would share it because yeah. I look above or over those personal disagreements because my focus is the activism and the message um so even if I have a personal disagreement with someone doesn't mean I'm not going to appear on their channel and talk about the news right. and the activism um but other people don't have the same philosophy or work ethic as me and that's absolutely fine that's their own choice I, I'm. Uh, this might be a completely random question, but I'm. I am curious. Uh, well, first, I want to address a few comments. Dodge Landisman, it's not true that you've actually listened to the U.S. protesters. You would know they have gone to speak to representative. Gone to speak is different than them 
officially calling for tax exempt status. People can give you the time of day. Uh, and it's not a contest either. U.S. politicians have to sit down and be upfront about de squatting their knowledge. Garrett Bass is hiding from public outcry. I mean, that's a good example, right? In LA. Well, I don't, like I said, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm not in the U.S. I don't have any. No, no, no. This is about me. I'm just addressing it I can't, my failing. I know this yeah, is not. Well, I can't comment on or well, compare no. things in the U.S. I can only sure. talk about. You're talking about my UK. comment. You know, I made that comment. Uh, right. So it, it, you have nothing to do with it. But I want to say, in my defense, I think I would have known if in a yes, I, Oklahoma and the the probably the attorney general is involved in that is suing specifically over Narconon. But I'm saying specifically with politicians calling out for tax exempt status, I have not seen anybody on the level of a U.S. senator, a statewide governor, uh, or even a congressperson because I would have heard them. And again, like Rick Caruso versus Karen Bass. You know, they were both that in the mayoral election, both of them were talking when they were running against each other. Both of them were talking about how much they want to distance themselves from Scientology. Neither of them said they should look into the tax except status. So anyway, that's just that's just what I'm standing by. But I'm glad you've affected uh, this type of change. It's important. And just a fun little silly question. Um, the next election, national election, is likely to be 2025, perhaps. No, most, most people expect but most most people expect the next general election will be later this year. Later, oh, that's soon. Okay, later this year. So, is Rishi or the the Labour Keith Keith Star? I for Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer. Yeah, is one better than the other? Do you think? For I mean, it's obviously probably not going to have that much of a conversation in the national level. But I do wonder with the press you're getting in Guardian, which is read by millions of people. I wonder if you can even pressure the top candidates in that election to say something about it. Um, who is better, Labour, Conservative, Rishi, or so? Or, I I yeah. think the Scientology issue is bipartisan, bipartisanal because I think Interesting, yeah. you don't have to have a political stance um, on abuse. I think stopping abuse is something that isn't right or left right i think it's yeah. something that both parties can agree with right. and diane abbott is one of many mps who will eventually be taking a stance on this you know i'm right. working on speaking to different mps on both across both parties and right. diane abbott was my first port of call she's currently independent but she's always been labor right which is on the left um right. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is get um, cross-party support for this because it's not a right or left issue. It's a matter of people currently being abused right now at St. Hill and in other cities in the UK and calling out politicians and asking them to do their part in stopping that abuse is not something that has a left or right swing. It's not political, right? It's it's helping vulnerable people sure, um, and stopping further harm and suffering. So that's the most important thing uh, for me. And I just want to also just say, because you were talking about the grand jury and Narcan and all of this, like, yeah, I'm doing a lot of work. Yes. But I'm also, I'm not the first person to do any of this. No, um, no, I'm not saying and, that. And there have been lots of people historically that have spoken out in the UK. Um there have been lawsuits b before in yes. the UK. There have been okay. there has been okay. press in the UK before. I'm not the first. Um and I'm not I'm not necessarily the best. I don't think there is a right or a wrong way. But what I'm doing is spending all of my time right now on doing everything I can to stop current abuse and suffering right and youtube is one of many strands to doing that it's a yes. platform i use to promote my work and give other people a platform to do the same um but most of my work is done behind the scenes reporting investigating you know right. protesting is another strand to it but most of the work is actually working with investigators and politicians and people behind the scenes right. to affect change and what i'm trying to do is stop the suffering and um, you know, I welcome and invite anybody and everybody to join me in that fight in whatever way they can or want to. If it's so much as leaving a comment under a video on someone's channel, that's great because that is playing a small but important part in raising awareness of this. So yeah. there isn't a right or wrong way. Protesting is one thing. Yes. Talking about it is another. 
you know, going and making videos on YouTube is one form of activism, building relationships with the press, going to do politician, all of this stuff I've just mentioned. They're all strands and spokes, if you like, in the machine, cogs in the machine that is the fight against Scientology. And um, they all play an equally valid and important role in the fight against Scientology. And I welcome everybody and anybody to do their part in whatever way they can. Well, put, what are you, uh, what's next? Where are you going tomorrow? What are some of the big events? To so uh, tomorrow, uh, Sunderland, which is a city in the northeast of the UK. Um, it's uh, maybe four hours on the train, four and a half hours. Um, I will be going there because they're holding a fundraising yeah. event for their new ideal organization. Um, so I'm going to be going there and live streaming from outside that. Um, the cool. fundraising event is actually taking place in a government building. So the last couple of days has been, I've been spending a lot of time uh, trying to wait, raise awareness and, and hold the, the local city council to account for allowing a fraudulent um, organization to use their government building for fundraising. I don't think that's quite right. Um, so what's happened in East Grinstead is starting to happen now in Sunderland um, with the whole like Scientology issue. So basically tomorrow going to do that protest outside our live stream um, and then next week onwards back to the grind of doing what I can. There's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes and I'll continue to do what I can and share news as and when I can. I'm curious, is that like a new tactic of Scientology? It's kind of smart for connecting with the politicians that are the least glamorous and the most low hanging fruit and then inviting them to premieres and stuff like is there this specific tactic that yeah it's called safe pointing oh it's called, it has a name cool yeah it's not new it's been going on since the 50s um yeah safe pointing is basically building relationships with local elected officials right. opinion leaders and um, people who are important in the local community um and and basically showering them with gifts and inviting them to premieres and events and so on and building relationships with them so that um, they look the other way when it comes to the issue of Scientology. Um, it's a tactic and it's called safe pointing and it's been going on for 70 years. Do you think, and perhaps with your further research, do you think that might open, I don't know what the specific semant the politic, the laws are in the UK, if it's different, but do you think that opens up the door to any play to pay to play charges uh, and either jail time or forced resignation of some of these council people? Well, all I'll say is I started um, looking at East Grinstead Town Council and um, revealed that there were a lot of um, questionable and unethical things going on. And a councillor resigned as a result of that. Um, and yeah. I'm only just getting started. That that's what I'll say. This is the tip of the iceberg. I mean, yeah, you're a corruption buster, man. And, uh, that's what I always want to do in journalism. And it's funny because when you're in local TV news, if you have any sort of, if you say anything slightly iffy about the council people or whatever, even if it's investigatory, it's like your name is, you know, the, your boss will be mad at you because you, you've ruined that relationship. Of course, the truth is more important than just sucking up to some schmuck politician. Um, Rosebud Amy, uh, who's a big advocate of mine, question, I'm sorry, I'm late here and I've stayed away from SP vloggers for weeks due to stress. Alex, how ha uh, have you been fair games lately? Do you feel, I don't think lately you have. Yeah, so, um, so um, they try and log into my website, scientologybusiness.com. Um, a thousand okay. hacking attempts are made every single day. Um yeah, a thousand attempts made to log in every single day. Um, I have a PI following me most of the time now. Um, wow, really? How do you know? Do you see like the same yeah. car, the same license plate? Or yeah, there's a handful of cars that are regulars and you know guys with laptops sitting outside my house and so on. It's all very obvious. So um, I get a barrage of tweets and comments every single day. Um, you know, there's one. Right. But, you know, that's all over, obviously, Scientology fair game. But you always have to bear in mind fair game exists in other ways, too. Okay. And what they try and do is sow seeds of doubt in communities so that they fight against each other. And there are creators who 
I don't believe are OSA, but are doing work that is complementary to what OSA yeah. want, which Why is discrediting and attacking me. There's one creator, for example, who has made 27 videos attacking me in the last three months. I don't think that person is OSA at all. Right. But by doing it and doing it to that extent, you are helping OSA right. in, in quite trying to create a division and divide rather than a debate i think it's important to debate and discuss things and i think it's important to call out people for doing things wrong or whatever or lying and all of this but what's happening at the moment is a lot of attacks but no discussion and debate and that's why i'm here and like i said earlier a lot of people have said that um i've changed my story over time but not a single person has been able to provide a single example of something no, that's changed. Lord knows I and I am, I am more than happy to debate and discuss that with anybody. If someone right. is, you know, anyone's welcome to email me. Hello at apostatealex.com. But what, um, in terms of fair game over, like that's not fair game, but it's what fair game is trying to achieve, which is a dismissed attacker. And by making 27 videos attacking me, you are getting other people to right. dismiss me and my experience, which is the goal of OSA. So if you dismiss, the attacker, game... you dismiss the attack. Sorry? If you dismiss the attacker, especially people who are even anti-Scientology, then you dismiss the attack. Exactly. So fair game has its overt things like the PI and the hacking attempts and the tweets from OSA bot accounts and stuff like that. Yes. But you have to also recognize the covert ways in which OSA achieves its goals, whether or not people realize that they are playing a part in that. Fascinating. Um, well, good. I'm glad. All right. So you you have to only you have to. So let me know if I'm keeping you too long. We sorry, I do most, need to go, but we'll, yes. we'll I can be for a bit. Yeah. What okay. Well, want? so we can have one last topic, but uh, so not important. It was just a wrap up to say we first and foremost, I had to take some responsibility for, you know, some people felt I threw up in myself. Some people felt they were being too hard. I fall in the middle. So I wanted to be careful, prepared. I thought you answered the questions very effectively. So we got to that. We got to the, the, uh, what you're doing with East Grinstead. That's fascinating how you could connect. So those are most important things. Last silly question, uh, coming out of, you're relatively young. So it's a fun question to ask. I've only asked Vanessa LaRose this question because she's also uh, quite young or on the younger side. Um, you come out of Scientology, all of a sudden you have this I think she's life. about 10 years older than me, but yeah. Yes. Well, I'm, I think young is anybody from 20 to 40. For me, I'm 33. It's weird. So I think anybody young is in that bracket, right? I think she's in her high 30s. Uh, but young to me, but you're 10 years older than you. I'm in the middle. Um, but I am wondering, you lose that friend group. And of course, you have such a focus on doing the work that dating is probably frowned upon. Have you tried to date post Scientology? Is that weird? Can you even communicate with people? Is your vocabulary so clouded where like you tell your potential date, you know, you've had some overts you're withholding. She's like, what the hell are you talking about? But I wonder if you tried to do that scene or not and what the hell that might be like. Yeah, I mean, like there's, you know, everyone has their own private life and- um, Yeah, you don't have to talk about it. And and they're, you know, at Vism all of that. But I think, um, I think, look, I, when, I had a, a girlfriend when I was in Scientology that I was trying to recruit into Scientology. Um, <laughs> you're one of which, those like Mormons. Yeah, which I haven't Funny. talked about publicly, but I will do at some point, I'm sure. But there is a no, whole thing know. where I was trying to recruit my girlfriend in. Um, and oh. then since then, because when I left, I didn't like I went about my my life without confronting the Scientology issue. Like I didn't talk about it. I just moved on right? Not um, because it was so traumatic. Right. I just kind of put it in a box in my head and didn't think about it. So a lot of my friends that I have now that I've had for 10 years, um, didn't even know I was a former Scientologist until I started office. my channel. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean um, that I didn't still do Scientology things. And basically, since speaking out, I'm now, I tell everyone that I'm an ex Scientologist because it's such an important part of what I'm doing with my everyday life. But right. um, in terms of dating and stuff, yeah, it's like it didn't really affect, it probably affected my relationships without me realizing at the time. Yes. Um, right. But I didn't. I never really had any discussions about it because I just didn't want to go there in my mind. I just wondered, a Scientologist, this is another thing I want to ask too, is if you got a Scientology and you're so recently out, 
Do, sci do you think the majority of Scientologists like don't even try to date? Like I've kind of noticed that as a theme, like there's, you know, they seem to date less than other people in the, in the log world, I suppose. And I wonder if they're just like, um, it's too much I, communication I, with people, Scientology. So they're like, all right, they want to chill. I alone. don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I think there's okay. one very well-known, um, ex-Scientologist <laughs> who, um, is known for, um, having lots of relationships with different women. So, I don't think I necessarily agree with that. I think everybody's different. Everybody's unique. Um, and I think everybody's story is valid. Um, there are things that Scientology make us do or think in a certain way that binds us all together in terms of similarities. Um, but every human is different. There is no single route to recovery or way of doing things to heal. Everyone has their own way of doing that. And yes, there are things that link us together that everybody say says is helpful like education for example to try and figure out what happened to you i've not met an ex-scientologist that has said that didn't help so there are things that unite us yes in our recovery but there isn't a right or wrong way or a single route to recovery just like there's not a single route to dealing with relationships and so on everyone is different and unique yes. Interesting. Yeah. And they all have their own. I always wonder how you look at it or whatever. That's all their own thing. Uh, we'll just um, finish up with a few comments. Thomas Mew Anderson, who certainly has his own point of view. Uh, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I want to read everybody's comments. And I do appreciate his channel. The Aaron call is mainly noise, noisy and lying. At least Alex is productive. Uh, and then made and I, don't, again, I just on that very briefly. Okay, I just, sure. Okay. I, I say this on my channel all the time, right? Please, do, and look, this is your channel, so right. do what you want. But on my channel, I always say, please stop attacking Aaron because I don't like the guy. We have right. our own personal disagreements, but right. like my channel is not a place for that, right? My channel is about the activism right. stuff. Right. This is your channel, not mine. But right. when I see comments like that, look, you're entitled to your own opinion and I want to encourage that debate and discussion. Mm -hmm. But by generalizing an attack against the Aaron cult. Well, look, Aaron has said certain things about me. Yes. And some of those things are lies. Yes. And some of those things I disagree with. And some of those things have been really hurtful and harmful to me. Yes. But Aaron's never directed people to come to my channel and start yeah. spewing no, shit. No, 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 but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. It's a direct yeah. consequence of mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. so there is definitely his subscribers and other channels, followers, you know, there is a group movement there, that, but they're not directed by any one particular person. So all I would say is that, you know, yeah, as a result of what Aaron has done, I've sure. received multiple messages every single day telling me to unalive myself. And that, that is poor man. Wow. And that, that yeah, weird. and that is not acceptable That's... or helpful to no, what no, no. I'm doing. No, no, they no. are doing it as a result of what Aaron has said in his videos, right. but they're not doing it because Aaron has directed that attack. And I just want to make that very clear. Respect. There's room for that debate and discussion. Yes. But I course, try and look above the personal disagreements because yes. who cares if Aaron and I don't like each other? No, who cares? It's completely yeah. irrelevant. What's important like, oh. is that yeah. we're attacking Scientology and trying to stop abuse and suffering that's happening right now in the UK. Right. 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 <laughs> I just want to, I'm glad you addressed that. I just want to read that comment in passing and just to read it and, and not even talk about it. But you gave a good answer. Um, I will I will say this. In spite of everything, all the specifics, both of you have said, if I'm not mistaken, mutually, that both of you think both of you are doing good work to bring down Scientology. So is that not... I don't think I, mean, I've, I've might, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, I don't think I've gone that far and been that okay. complimentary. Um, but well, I, you, know. you don't think he has done good work, though. I mean, I think he's he's generated a ton of press, whether it be CNN, News Nation, a ton of outside. But that's let's talk about that. Why 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 do you think we um, might have disagreement? I don't know if I've seen any press that was generated because Aaron has built a relationship with a journalist. I think um, Aaron has brought a lot of attention to the topic of Scientology. Yes, and I think that that is important and valid, and that's great. I think. Um, anybody that does anything to raise awareness is important and valid and i encourage everybody to do that in their own way um whether oh. that be creating content on youtube or whether that be protesting in person or whether that be commenting on a video that therefore drives the algorithm to show it to more people and therefore get more people engaged or right. whether it be building relationships with politicians or sure reporting things to law enforcement 
every single way is valid and important in fighting Scientology. Do you see that? Cool. I, I get that 100%. Um, I don't want to keep you forever, so I think we're good. Uh, hey, you you put your feet to the fire, and I'm totally satisfied with with the responses that you gave. And I appreciate you being willing to talk about everything. And, and you know, I think we all thank you for your work um, in terms of exposing a lot of these politicians and actually getting some to commit uh, to looking into the tax exempt stuff. Uh, you know, you could, you could talk about the personality differences and the specifics in X, Y, and Z. But at the, at the end of the day, if you're creating effective, meaningful change, you're creating effective, meaningful change. And that's, that's what the focus should be about. Um, you got to go. Anything else you want to add? I could talk to you forever. So I hope we do this again. And I want to, you know, get even more into the weeds about the political stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm more than happy to do a part two, part three, whatever it takes. Boy. Thank you for having me, Dodge. Yep. Um, a lot of fun. If anyone wants to follow what I'm doing, Apostate Alex is my YouTube channel. Um, yep. You can support what I'm doing with buy me a coffee and, you know, commenting and all of this sort of stuff. Um, I have a blog, Scientologybusiness.com, which is where I report on the UK, European and Commonwealth activities of Scientology and the activism and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, if you want to join in the fun tomorrow evening, UK time, I will be outside Sunderland um city cool. hall or whatever it was sunderland museum i'll be outside there protesting basically um, so join me join me live on my channel i'll say hello and i, I think you're so funny when you protest so you always uh, add a really good dose of humor which i enjoy yeah you gotta have a bit of humor you gotta yeah. look you got in the uk we are very polite and very yes. conservative with a small c and mm -hmm. so yeah we do things slightly differently here yes. anyway as a cultural difference and i try and play on that because i'm aware a lot of my audience are american um so i try and play on things that i know that they'll find funny like saying pip pip cheerio scientology's got to go no one says pip pip cheerio in the uk I was but it's, that, but it's something that will make people smile even here in the uk but also get the message across so yeah come and join the fun tomorrow and dodge thank you so much for having yeah. me yeah Alex, hell of a lot of fun. Maybe next week or the week after, uh, let's do a follow-up and I'll be wanting to ask you about the protest. So first and foremost, thank you really just for clearing everything up. I think it's nice uh, we had a platform to do that and you answered very effectively. And thank you for uh, telling people how they can help. So hopefully uh, next week or the week after, we'll do a little rundown about all, all your activities. Apostate Alex, again, is his YouTube. And I just want to say uh, really fun. You're the best man Uh Thank you for your guts and your honesty. Uh, and as somebody says, you're a fascinating voice to listen to. You could you could honestly uh, just talk the phone book and I'd be listening. Um, so yeah, thanks for everything, man. And we will we will be in touch. Thank you. All right, au revoir, sir. Appreciate it. Bye bye.